my channel, I'm Danny. Okay, so I'm gonna do another video uh, in my little installment of how to become an ODP series. And again, this is one that you've been asking for. I just love getting your questions on my videos and things. It's just such a joy to read and so nice to see that so many of you have really enjoyed watching the videos and found them informative. That just means so much to me. Um, so thank you for popping back. And if you're new here, welcome. If you've been with me for a while, uh, welcome back guys and if you would please please give the video a thumbs up because it means everything and if you could subscribe I would appreciate it. I'm an ODP. I'm Danny. I'm 38 years old. I'm now an ex-ODP. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm an ex-ODP. Um, I spent about 15 years in the job and I left about two years ago to become to go back to full-time education to become um, well to do um, a degree in medieval history long story short I've got a really long complicated set of um, chronic illnesses that I've had since I was born and they've basically just got too bad for me to be able to do the job of an ODP and work long days in theatres anymore so I've got something called bronchiectasis I've got no immune system got something wrong with my heart it's a car crash, it's a nightmare, but it is what it is. Um, and I really enjoyed my time as an ODP, but I can't unfortunately do it at this moment in time till I'm a bit better. Um, but I really enjoyed the career. And if you're if you're here because you're choosing to do it, then I really, really just want to stress that it is such a fulfilling and wonderful career. So if you've just got into your course and you're starting university this September, congratulations. If you're here because you're second or third year of your degree or your diploma, well done and welcome back. Okay, so this is a video that you've requested, which is what do I need to start my course? What do I need when I go to placement? And I thought, I was thinking about it and I just thought I want to I want to give you a real realistic view. So I'm also going to look at it from what I thought when I was a student, what I actually thought I needed, what I actually in real life did need what I didn't need, and I'm going to look at it from the perspective of a qualified <laughs> ODP as well. Okay, so most people when they start their university course for operating department practitioner, they do a block in university. And I think all of that has been thrown up in the air with COVID as well. So I know the guys that started last September, bless you, you had such a difficult time. Um, some of you didn't get into placement till so late and things like that. So just huge well done for sticking at it. Um, we've all been up against it with this pandemic um, for studying. So well done. So hopefully if you're starting in September, you'll be going in to do a bit of um, a few weeks of university uh, lectures and things to, to sort of explain about the course and explain about the job and things like that and get the basics um, under, under your belt. Uh, so you'll have things like core lectures on anatomy and physiology, perioperative practice, operating department practice. Uh, you'll learn about anaesthetics, the three disciplines, anaesthetics, scrub and recovery. And then they'll give you some basic OSCEs probably, how to put on your gloves, how to put on your mask and basically how to get sterile and get gowned up the right way without de without contaminating yourself or your sterile field, how to lay up a basic uh, surgical instrument trolley, how to maintain your surgical field and your surgical environment, um, how to work as a circulator, so how to open up packets appropriately for the other people working in the operating theatre which you do a lot as a, as a student um, in preparation and um, basically they want to look they want to teach you how to to work safely uh, both from a manual handling perspective but also from a safety for you perspective but also safety for the patients and the rest of your team so they're going to teach you all those things when you first go into uni and it's going to be very hands-on and practical you might be in the simulation suite they're probably going to teach you some basic first aid and your resuscitation skills it's a really fun time this is when you bond with your course mates and um if you're like me you'll have, you'll meet friends for life um it's a fun time to go out and get a coffee and start studying and if you're able to enjoy a little bit of university life, freshers is always fun, um, just not too much, but it's a really good couple of weeks. It's also time to get your equipment and books and everything like that ready for placement. So around two or three weeks in, you might be heading toward, maybe a month in, heading towards your first placement. Scary, exciting, all of that. I've been there, I remember the feelings well. Um, it varies what people get for their first placement. Um, mine, what was my first placement? It was General Theatres at Southampton General um, University Hospital Trust. Um, anaesthetics on my first day, and boy, was did I feel thrown in the deep end a little bit. But 
that's why I'm here to get you ready. Okay. First things first, walking into the hospital, what to expect. So you should be given all universities I appreciate do this bit differently. So and it's been a few years for me since since I did it, but for me, my university provided me with my clogs. Um, you have to wear appropriate theatre shoes, they are a specific type of clogs. Bit odd, granted, but that is what we have to wear. There is no such thing as trainers really. You will see qualified staff wandering around in trainers and especially anaesthetists and things like that. That's their prerogative and I imagine they've probably gone higher up and got permission to do it for, for whatever reason. But as a student, unless there's a reason to wear trainers, it's a no. They look scruffy and also they're very hard to clean effectively. Um, so there's a no to trainers. <laughs> there is a no to Crocs because they have holes in. You can drop uh, instruments on your feet. That would hurt. I've seen that happen. <laughs> Um, also, there are spillages in theatres, bodily fluids, lots of things that you don't really want on your bare feet, or your socks, but yes. Um, yeah, so no Crocs. You need a proper brand of theatre shoes, so um, the ones we had were Tolfin, um, and you can get them, you can have any ones you like, customised, things like that, um, as long as they're comfy, usually the ones with the back. Um, the gel ones are best so they can be chucked in the washing machine. So my university gave us ours. I can't remember if I paid a fee, maybe they were about £20. But so I got my university shoes to take with I got my theatre shoes to take with me. So in they go in my bag the night before. Um, and obviously you pick up your scrubs when you go into the theatre complex. So you take your ID badge. So when you first get to placement, somebody is going to meet you. You're not going to be there on your own. Usually you'll be with a couple of other people from your cohort um, and you'll be sort of directed where to meet at the hospital and somebody will come and find you. They'll do all the necessary checking you in, things like that, getting you a temporary ID or giving you your ID. They'll take you into a room, probably run down through some of the hospital guidelines, talk about fire, how to exit the hospital safely if there's a fire, um, talk about theatre guidelines, safety measures within theatres and just make sure you understand all the paperwork. You might have to sign some paperwork, they'll check who your next of kin is, do dot all the I's, cross the T's, all of that. Um, so you'll have probably a day, half a day of admin really. But first things first, when they're ready to take you into the actual clinical side of theatre and complex, you are basically crossing through a magic door from the normal hospital to theatre. The magical doors, it's basically like stars in their eyes. Where you, you go in dressed like this and you come out dressed like this. First things first, when you go into the theatre complex, um, once they're, they're ready to take you in, you may already have your ID. They, um, they might give it to you then uh, or or they'll sign you in. But basically, usually every morning you tap into the theatre complex with your ID. And then you go straight into the changing rooms, which is used by all of the staff, obviously separated into sexes. And there is a section for scrubs. They're all in their different sizes. And um, usually it's good to get there a little bit early before your shift to make sure you get the right size. Because I can tell you there is nothing worse than being forced as a, a larger female with bigger boobs, into wearing very tight, small scrubs. Not pleasant, not pleasant. Or baggy ones as well. Baggy ones are not good either, because they will fall down. So um, try and get them a little bit before your shift to grab the right scrubs. And then at the end of the day, those scrubs come off and they get put into a special bin and they are laundered. They never get worn outside of theatre. You will not go and get a coffee or your lunch in those scrubs, you will have to get changed into regular clothes if you want to leave the complex. So always take lunch with you or make sure you've got enough time to throw on your clothes and run out. So if you're a smoker, I'd consider it stopping now. 
um, <laughs> before you start and uh, packed lunches are kind of the way forward because there's just not enough time on lunch breaks to get changed into your regular clothes and run down to Costa's usually okay so it's like stars in their eyes today Matthew I'm gonna be an ODP <laughs> so you're there as a student you walk in in your regular clothes you walk through the magical doors of the change room and then out the other side dressed in your scrubs looking like this <laughs> So scrubs come in every colour under the sun, every trust has their own way of doing it and usually the colours denote certain things. Um, qualified staff tend to wear darker coloured blue scrubs and uh, students tend to wear lighter colour blue but in some trusts, especially um, in certain principles such as obstetrics and gynaecology they tend to wear this colour burgundy. I'm wearing this today because I've been doing some bank shifts in those areas and also in phlebotomy um, sometimes recovery wear shifts, so basically we don't tend to wear dresses um, or uniforms or anything like that so scrubs it is I'm afraid they're basically like big pajamas they're warm they're quite warm but where if you're a girl I would wear a good solid sports bra to work lots of lifting of patients and things like that and transferring you want your girls tucked in for your modesty because these come down quite low and uh, when you're bending over to do certain things with patients, yeah, you can imagine, yeah, <laughs> been there. First things first. Okay, let's dispel some rumours here. It is not like Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> you can't be Meredith Grey, you cannot have your hair hanging around your face, full lip gloss getting in your hair, uh, no. Also, Meredith, Christina, for those of you that are old school like me, um, wearing lovely um, vests, shirts um, and ribs that come down to, uh, with sleeves that come down to their wrist. No, we are naked below the elbow. Apple Watch, eh -eh. that's got to come off hairbands nope okay so that's naked below the elbow can get away with wearing a vest underneath but that's about it hair has to go up neat and tidy usually for me it was always in a bun it's a bit short now but it was in a bun okay so I have seen student ODPs turning up with their own personalized scrubs <laughs> You have to wear what the trusts provide for you. There's a reason for that. Basically, it's, especially in COVID times, but even before that, it's all to do with the sterility of the environment and what may, you may not see anything on you, you may not have seen a splash of blood, you may not see anything, but there may be invisible microbes. Um, so these will be sent to the laundry and laundered at really high temperatures um, and then really sort of starched and pressed. So these do not go in your bag, they do not come home with you. Um, don't be tempted to take scrubs for tomorrow because you, you're worried the right size might not be there, just turn up early. Okay, so this is how we're starting the shift. Next, hair. Okay, another no-no for being a student ODP. Again, watching Grey's Anatomy, everybody has wonderful scrub caps. Sometimes glittery, sometimes personalised, always pretty. You don't need them as a student ODP and really you shouldn't be wearing them. It is one of the privileges that you get for qualifying, I'm afraid. Um, so you'll see your surgeons, anaesthetists and qualified ODPs wearing these beautiful, coloured, uh, vibrant hats. It's one of the perks of getting your qualification. Um, until then, you will need to wear a standard theatre hat. They're usually the little net ones that look like you work in a kitchen, sort of a hair net scenario really, but they're a hat. There's a reason for it. They come in different colours that denote who you are, why you're there, what you're doing there. Usually students wear a yellow hat in my trust and then when you qualify you would wear a blue hat. It's basically so somebody doesn't grab you in an emergency and say, you here, quite right, scrub now, I need you. Don't be tempted to wear any sort of different hats. Wear your yellow student hat, 
be a student, embrace it for while you can, trust me. Because after that point, when you qualify, they will be grabbing you and making you do things. So <laughs> hats like this, you don't need. They're a waste of money until you're qualified. Crocs are a waste of money. You don't need them. You can't wear them. Personalised scrubs, you don't need them. You can't wear them. It's all free. Embrace it. So you get your scrubs when you go into the changing rooms. You should have your shoes from your university. From your university. If not, get a pair of Tolfen theatre shoes or clogs. If you're doing trips to the ward for outpatient department um, scenarios or to um, or your trips to the ward to do practice up there and get some competencies up on the ward, which people do have to do, I advise Skechers. So um, in some of my jobs, I now wear more of a nursing uniform. Uh, well, I wear a nursing uniform now. Um, so I wear Skechers. I have Mary Janes and these black trainers, which are quite neat, and they have gel insole. Skechers are the way forward. Honestly, they are so comfy, but unfortunately, really until you're qualified, and even then, you can't really wear them in theatres. We need anti-static shoes in theatre because of the uh, flammable gases. So get those shoes. Usually Tolfin, in my mind, are the best. Um, but they should be provided by the uni. Scrubs will be provided when you get there and theatre hats will be, a fresh one will be there for you every single day. Okay, next. You are gonna wanna keep some alcohol gel on you. You can get the little clips that will clip to your um, pocket, um, especially with COVID times, just so you've always got some. Hand hygiene is really, really important. So always good to keep a little mini gel with you in your rucksack or generally just on your person. Okay, family usually buy these for us as a little well done for going to university present. They're wonderful, they are essential, really important because really you shouldn't be getting your phone out in practice. In reality, we do all have our phones with us. Obviously, I understand people need to be aware of, you know, if a school, their children might need to contact them, things like that. We all have lives at home, but you, you can't be in in the anaesthetic room or in theatre on your phone. So be aware, you may have to turn your phone off for most of the time. In my experience, you don't use your phone anyway because there's never any signal in theatre. So just be aware of that. Phones either go in your locker or in your pocket turned off because until you break because you can't be on them. They can also interfere with people's pacemakers, uh, defibrillators, things like that. So we re there are reasons, there are signs around the hospital to not use your mobile phone, honestly. Um, okay, so fob watches right here there are lovely beautiful fob watches so when i first started my mum and dad got me a proper fob watch um beautiful metal one winnie the pooh one i still have it now i can't use it anymore because infection control got a little bit mad at us all a few years back quite rightly um and so they couldn't be cleaned properly so now we have to wear these ones which have a silicone coating i got these ones from argos so they come in a two pack with different coloured backgrounds they're silicone so they can be wiped clean and you just replace the battery when you need to so they just get popped on again you don't have to have a fob watch but it does help when you're counting respirations for patients in recovery so you're looking down at your watch while holding an airway of the patient and counting the respirations and things like that so there's a reason for that so fob watch and again naked below the elbow no long tops Grey's Anatomy it's a wonderful program, but it's a little bit not spot on sometimes, I'm afraid. So you do get cold in theatres. It is a cold environment. But we have theatre gowns to go on for you to wear in that scenario that, uh, that are sort of more sterile and things. You will have to take it off once you step sort of into theatre and near the operating table and things like that. And you'd probably re-scrub anyway. But if you're just milling around theatre complex and maybe eating your lunch or if you're chilling in the anaesthetic room uh, while your patient's on the table for a six hour uh, operation there's plenty of cover-ups for you and things like that so just stick with what's what's appropriate okay next essential piece of ODP kit get yourself some of these scissors these were from Etsy for an ODP starter kit it's really cool to see that there's ODP starter kits the way there are nursing starter kits now these are essential. We get called down to A&E quite a lot these days to assist as part of trauma teams and as um, resuscitation teams, airway teams. So um, a lot of ODP is becoming advanced practitioners now. So we get called down quite often to A&E and sometimes you have to cut off patients' clothes. So they need to be fairly decent um, scissors and quite sharp. Um, safety scissors though as well, so not going to do anything usually these go in my back pocket very important as an ODP and 
you also if you need to prepare your tube if it's the wrong size that you've got out if you need to prepare another one quickly you need to cut that tube ready to go um, for the anaesthetist to hand it so you need them in your back pocket ready to go also used for so many other things in theatre it's untrue essential piece of equipment and again they need wiping down every day but they go in my back pocket okay all trusts will have their own guidelines so make sure you follow and stick to them um, it changes year by year when I first started we were allowed lanyards some trusts allow it. it does depend what environment you're working in they can get a bit annoying swinging they could also swing into the patient's face if you're doing an airway scenario holding an airway or involved in the intubation so it really does depend on your, what your trust says possibly that they don't have to be too long some trusts like you to clip your id to your front pocket so just just be aware of that be aware that these things are lovely but they do need to be washed as well so always think about infection control but usually it's this side that gets clipped just to your top pocket so your id essential otherwise you will not be able to get through doors your id as a student will be limited uh, until you qualify uh, but you'll be allowed to have access to the areas that you need to go um, and that's it so um, but you will need access you will need your id the whole day to get through certain security doors to different areas of theatre cath labs uh, MRI, things like that, uh, and to push heavy theatre beds through, so you will need your ID always at the ready. Okay, in a normal scenario, masks. In a normal scenario, you just will walk into your theatre complex in normal times, just with your hat on, covering your hair at all times. You wouldn't be wearing a mask until you went into theatre, so once you're going into theatre, then usually everybody tends to wear a mask but certainly once you're scrubbed you would have a mask not one of these types it would be one of the types you tie up so once you're scrubbed so for a large portion of the day you will look something like this except they'll be tied okay for a large portion of the day you will be wearing a mask so again girls make up there's some great setting sprays out there, but I have to say, generally, it's so, it can get really warm and sweaty, it can be really cold, um, there's lots of sort of deep humidifiers and sort of aerosol sprays and things like that, you, quite often you're going to have face guards on, you might have goggles on, always a mask, so generally a little bit of long wear no smudge mascara, highly recommend Bobbi Brown no smudge mascara, that's what I wear, um, and a setting spray if you're gonna wear makeup, but generally no makeup, no bright colors. And make sure no nail varnish, clean nails, no rings, take those rings off, no, no rings with stones in. So my engagement and wedding rings come off when I'm at work. Um, don't do a Grey's Anatomy and clip them to your scrubs. I've seen people lose them like that. Leave them at home. We all want to wear our rings. If you've just got a plain wedding band, you can, but again, it's probably safer to not. So I would give a wide berth to, to a lot of makeup other than a bit of lip balm and uh, a bit of mascara, really, and a good moisturiser. Um, but, okay, so going into practice with covid you're probably going to be asked to wear a mask all day long the whole day in every area so for me what i wear now is one of these masks which is the ff3 masks ffp3 it depend on your trust i have to wear this because i have a lung condition so they work by they get fitted specifically to you they are very tight, they have a filter here, okay, so they go on very tight and these are the masks that I wear all day long and when I take these off they do leave a mark, very sore, very tight, I get quite a bruise on my nose and very tight here, you can see how it's digging in. have to 
have a tight seal and a tight fit to work. You might have to wear these. I imagine you'll be wearing regular FF2 masks unless there's a need to. But again, if you're in an area with COVID, you probably will have to wear something like this, possibly a respirator mask. So just be prepared of that. If you struggle with masks, I would start getting prepared for it now because you are going to be wearing masks in theatre as an ODP all the time with or without COVID. So just get ready for that. Okay, essential pieces of kit. Tape. <sighs> Infection control are probably going to tell me off for telling you this, but they are essential piece of kit for every ODP. Every good ODP has some of this medical tape uh, micropore in their pocket or on their person, shall we say. Um, infection control would probably say get a new piece of tape every day, but that would be... Every good ODP has some micropore in their pocket. I have a good, every good ODP goes home and has a good collection of about 45 rolls of micropore. So if anybody in the house needs some micropore, I'm good. Um, but yes, you need this. So quite often there are different tapes. We tape the patient's eyes shut with a different type of tape. Um, so that will be on your airway trolley. But this tape we use for everything from um, after we take cannulas out to um, we use this from, for everything from taking cannulas out, uh, just a quick fix, just to, to pop on things. Um, so you always need this in your pocket. Top tip for an ODP, so pop that in your pocket. Okay, other essentials. These pens. Um, this is the wrong one, but the little blue ones, and I think it's the Make by Bic, yeah. Um, so not this kind, but you will need to have black, blue, green and red. And it's just a lot more handy than carrying around a whole bunch of pens. Um, one thing to remember, people steal your pens. Do you have a pen? There's so many forms to sign in, in, in theatre and lots and lots of paperwork. People are always saying to you, can I borrow your pen? And uh, if you're like me, when you first started, um, my mum and dad got me a pen that had my name on it because they were really proud of me. And I was like, oh, posh pen, yay. Yes, Mr. Anistis, of course you can borrow my pen. You can tell I was an eager beaver, can't you? I was so excited to be there. Of course you can borrow my pen, Mr. Anistis. Here you go. And then try to follow him around for the rest of the day. Oh, could I, could I have that pen back, please? Oh, I don't know where I left it. Sorry. I don't know where it is. Never, ever let people have your pens. And if you do, always carry spare cheapy pens. Never, ever take posh pens to work. So you need a multi-pen, a few of those. Keep some in your bag. Keep some, maybe one or two in your pocket. My scrubs don't have a pocket at the moment, but yes, normal scrubs have a pocket, so it will go here. Always keep a highlighter, top tip. So for things like recovery and, the, and in theatre, um, keeping track of where you are on the list and things, or making notes and annotations, highlighter is really important. So those two are essentials. On that, I'm just going to add, stationery wise, get lots of pens. Lots and lots and lots of pens. You will need them. Okay, before you start university, if you need glasses or you suspect you need glasses, go and get your eyes tested and get them. So wearing glasses in theatre can be tricky because things steam up with your mask, as you know. Um, however, they are essential. So for me, I need to, I've got horrific eyesight. Um, and so to be able to thread the sutures onto um, the holder and things, um, I would need to be wearing glasses that day and I can't wear contacts. So always have my glasses with me. So don't be ashamed if you need to wear them, do. Um, just make sure that they're, they're not loose or anything. They're not gonna fall off when you're looking down and that they're gonna, not gonna fall into the body cavity while you're, while you're scrubbed. Just make sure they're nice and secure and always have them with you if you need them. <laughs> Things that people turn up with that you do not need for your first placement as an ODP student. Probably don't need as an ODP either. I love the NHS. Sweet. Um, this is a tourniquet for phlebotomy. Very useful at times. Um, however, you won't be learning phlebotomy probably until you are qualified. Um, even then, we have phlebotomists. Most ODPs do not do a lot of phlebotomy. 
you might, uh, it's very important to get on the cannulation course, which comes with the phlebotomy course, and um, yeah, I probably did that in the first eight weeks that I was qualified, the trust put me on a course alongside the course for, so you do your phlebotomy and uh, cannulation course, and then you also do a course for administering IV drugs, which is really important, and do your calculations, so make sure you're ready. Um, but generally, patients get their phlebotomy done before they come in, and uh, or the anaesthetist will do it really so it's you may do some in recovery if needed but it's not it doesn't tend to be too much of a thing so don't worry too much but certainly you do not need to go into your ODP practice with a tourniquet okay because we have number one disposable tourniquets my big point here is everything has to be disposable this is a COVID nightmare this is an infection control nightmare and let me tell you those people they follow you around they are looking for someone to bust. They are just stood there waiting to do their job, quite rightly. And they are going to be like, why are you wearing that wedding ring? Why are you wearing that engagement ring? Take that rock off. I told you about that before. Why are you wearing earrings that are dangling around here? You know? Why are you wearing bright blue eyeshadow in theatre? Um, yeah, so the one thing they are going to jump on is... Uh, non-disposable items. Um, we have disposable tourniquets that get used and get thrown away. That's it. You will not need this, even when you're qualified. Even if you'd retrain as a phlebotomist, we don't use these. <laughs> On the subject. Feeling very Grey's Anatomy now. <sighs> stethoscopes, Littman stethoscopes, amazing things really 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 good if you're a cardiologist really good if you work in cath labs or possibly in a cardiology environment but generally no i've seen people bring these on the first day of their odp placements don't you're gonna get laughed at people you, you don't need this peeps it's it's not an essential piece of kit okay it's a very cool piece of kit why do I have one because when I got into pre-assessment I had to do a course on um, physical assessment to um, learn how to listen to heart sounds and listen to the lungs to check that somebody is fit for their operation but I had to do you know there's a whole course for it um, and a whole lot of extra training that you have to do so a stethoscope was appropriate for me to use then but that was like a whole like eight years nine years into being qualified you might want to get one for year three if you want to to keep in your bag however we have dispo well not they're not disposable we have stethoscopes in theatre the main person who needs a stethoscope is the anaesthetist if you get a good anaesthetist in about year two year three they will let you start listening to heart sounds or you can ask and say can I have a listen and they will teach you the difference between the heart sounds what a lub dub dub is and a dub dub lum and all of that. Um, they'll teach you what a heart murmur sounds like, which is what is what you'd be looking for in in, in a pre-assessment and things like that. Um, but generally, these are for the anaesthetist, so don't worry about it. It's just an expense that you don't need. Gloves. These are the wrong gloves. These are just from home. But generally, they're blue nitrile gloves. So these are not sterile gloves, and these are the type that you just pop in. So every time you walk into the anaesthetic room. You're popping on your gloves, ready to go. So you should always have gloves on anytime you're doing anything with any patient or with drugs or anything like that. So gloves on. They're not band angled like folding out like the latex ones or uh, the non-latex ones now, but the powdered gloves that we put on when we're going to be sterile or scrubbing, things like that, which come in a packet which you have to unfold and all of that. They're very hard to put on. These are easy to come on. They come in various different sizes. Um, they shouldn't be too snug, but they do tend to rip as well sometimes, so just make sure that you've got the right size. You will go through hundreds of these a day, but they do save your hands. You'll be washing your hands a lot, so make sure you've got some moisturiser in your backpack um, to, to moisturise your hands throughout the day because it's, it's really important to keep your hands hydrated because you're washing them so often, putting gel on them and taking gloves on and off. So after every time you've touched a patient or done something with a patient, take your gloves off and pop them in the bin, the yellow bin. Your black bin is for paper waste and that type of thing, regular rubbish, and your yellow bin is your clinical waste bin, so things like that will go in there. Masks in and around theatre. 
yeah, it's a cool mask. I like it. However, they're not going to want you to be wearing your own mask that you got on the 50p stall at the market. They're going to want you to be wearing the Trust's masks that they provide because they can, they've been tested and as far as they're aware, they're the right ones. So don't be tempted to, to wear your own mask these days. Unless there's a different policy that I don't know about. If your trust says you can, it's up to you, but I would just go with the disposable ones and I would change them throughout the day. Probably change my mask. Um, I wear my FF, I wear my special mask now, the FF3, FFP3, but um, so I change that maybe three times a day. Um, they're quite expensive, but regular masks I probably change every four or five, six patients really. So there's a lot of changing things. Okay, other essentials to keep with you going into placement. Books like this saved my bacon so many times. Um, okay, so it's just a pucker pad with different sections. And what I used to do, oh my God, this has given me all the memories. Daniela Montgomery, ODP student, E-level theatres, anaesthetics, mobile number. Um, and then basically what I've done is written when you first get your induction, you're going to get all the core information. Basically, how to bleep somebody, how to fast bleep the anaesthetist. Number to dial in the event of a cardiac arrest, which is all the twos. Two, 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 two. The code for the blood fridge, very important. The code to get into cardiac intensive care unit. Uh, all of the phone numbers for the different theatres. Phone number for theatre reception. Phone number for resus department. Phone number for the night coordinator. Phone number for out of hours porters, transfusion, endoscopy. All of these were important to me at the time. In phone number for recovery. Because quite often you'll have to pick up the phone in theatre as the anaesthetic um, side and say, hello, we're ready, we're bringing Mrs Smith through now. Yes, I know we're a little bit late. Yes, I know we're a little bit early. Yeah, just how it worked out. Yeah, we're coming through now. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Um, yeah, that's how that works. Okay, the next thing I did was write down about blood groups, for some reason. Um, and the next thing I did was write down about drugs. So you take all of the drugs labels from the anaesthetic room. So this one is noradrenaline. Four mils added to 46 mils of 0.8 mm, dextrose saline. To make 50 mils, yeah. Actrapid insulin, 0.5 added to 50... Uh, NACL, so uh, normal saline, uh, 50 international units in 50 mils of 0.9% saline. Okay, so these are important drugs that were important. Oh, this is fantastic. A ready to go sign saying, Danny, gone to tea. Probably that would leave that for the anaesthetist just to let him know because I'm sure he was really worried that the ODP student had gone to tea. Probably couldn't have coped without me, really. One of my favourite uh, anaesthetists at the time. Um, okay, so I've written down to be drawn up. I didn't draw it up. Well, I was with, you're always with your mentor in every anaesthetic room, so don't worry. Whether you're scrub, recovery or anaesthetics, you will have a mentor to teach you all of, and sort of sign you off for your competencies and just basically be with you and teach you. And they are the best people. Um, some of my favourite, favourite people were my mentors. Um, really people that got me through my course, really, um, and recognised my strengths and weaknesses And, and mentored me and really helped get me through. Um, but so basically, each anaesthetist and each surgeon has their own way of doing things and their own way, things that they like and their own little orders of doing things. So I've put down like uh, a thousand, uh, he, he likes a litre of Hartman's to go up when we're putting the patient under, um, blue and pink cannula, um, BP and ECG. Some anaesthetists like full monitoring, some don't need it all for certain things. He likes a temp probe, he has an art line, Likes to use LMA's particular brand, um, and I've got his type of anaesthetics that he likes. Sucks, atropine, ketamine, dimorphine, cyclosine, tramadol, or undantatron. Um, this will be for a particular type of surgery. So all of these notes really helped me understand a lot about it. So things like the name of the drug, and then I write next to it what it's for and its indications. Um, yeah, basically, 
all the indications for the drugs and what they're for and anything like this any sort of notes for particular specialities or theatres in particular anaesthetic disciplines okay so I'm in cardiac theatres here which is where I ended up working when I qualified I fell in love probably that very first day cardiac drugs midazolam rocuronium pancuronium propofol fentanyl tranexamic acid kefiroxine phenylephrine uh, phenylephrine uh, sodium chloride yeah okay cardiac setup in the anaesthetic room pacing box at least two catheter pack cvp inco gloves drip art line airway gases tape propofol infusion diathermy bar block ecg monitoring toe probe transesophageal echo big probe that goes down to check the heart before they start basically all of these notes every day when I went into theatre until it was solid in my head I would get my little book flip to the page for oh I'm in cardiac theatre C today right what do I need and I personally always got in there super early to make sure that I was because I was always really anxious and really worried that I'd get something wrong or mess up so I always used to get in there early and get everything ready and be ready to go and then I'd flip to this every single day and get follow my list to make sure I had it all until it was fully ingrained in my head and even when I was a qualified OVDP even now I still go back to these books and go oh gosh I haven't done ENT in a really long time how do I do it ah flip to the page and I'm okay or I just ask people but books like doing things like this okay so look there to be cardiac paediatrics it's very different setup to an adult cardiac um so books like this making notes carrying books like like this around really helped me small enough to just go on the side in the anaesthetic room out the way um, and you've got time when the patient's under to add to it really really important always carry out something this size in my pocket to take notes really quickly and I still take these to work now um, but if you are going into placement at the minute just follow all of the guidelines make sure you're prepared take everything in a rucksack you don't need a posh nice handbag um, everything's going to be locked away in a locker probably um, but take a rucksack take some snacks throughout the day take um, a good chilies cold flask of water keep hydrated sometimes there's not a lot of time to, to run up and get a drink go to the toilet when you can um, eat when you can um, and just try and stay nice and warm on the way into work sometimes you're going to be really tired to so make sure you've got a good way of getting home when you qualify you're going to be doing things like night shifts and stuff but they are really understanding to people's home lives and things like that so just you will have an education team to look after you and you know just always if you're struggling always flag it up to them or your mentors and just say look i'm having trouble with this particular uh, learning outcome i'm having trouble with getting my competencies i was really poorly and poorly now I, I had this condition then I was really poorly then and I had to do a lot just to graduate in the end um, and that included going in on Saturdays and Sundays with special permission and working with a very kind mentor that came in on those days to help me just to help me pass just to get me through and I will forever Tom if you're watching <laughs> you were amazing you I wouldn't have graduated without you And he's one of the best ODPs probably around now, probably a senior, just bossing it somewhere. But, you know, basically everybody who could help me did help me. <laughs> and I hope, like to think that I became a good ODP because I had good mentors and a, a real good team of people who wanted me to succeed and, and really helped get me there. Um, and the rest of it is just trying and error. You will make mistakes. You will have days where you go home and think, I can't do it. I can't go back it's really hard and you know why it's hard it's hard for a reason because you're working with real people these are real people's lives in our hands as such but it's so rewarding when you get that hug from that patient in non-covid times as they're leaving recovery and they say thank you i know and you say no <laughs> you're welcome but and they say no thank you because i was so scared of having this done today and just having you hold my hand through the anesthetic and having you in recovery really helped me and you made me feel like my fears weren't silly thank you so much and that means the world really it's helping people at its best at its finest 
and we're so privileged to do the job that we do. We get to look after people at the most vulnerable and uh, I will forever be proud to be an ODP and uh, I hope one day I can go back to it but until then I thought I'd just impart a little bit of my my limited words of wisdom for you so I hope you've enjoyed watching this um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe for more if there's any videos you'd like me to film or anything you want to know then do drop a comment down below and let me know you can follow me on Instagram at Daniela underscore Logan underscore makeup or at medieval underscore university gal Okay, I think that's it basically. That's that's everything that you need going into placement. So you'll get your scrubs when you walk through the door, you'll get your hat, you'll get one of these when you qualify. You should have your shoes already going in. Um, but so if you haven't got shoes before you're going to placement, buy your own. Um, don't spend a fortune on them, but make sure that they fit really well. Follow, you will get a pack from theatres from your hospital before you start, an induction pack, and that will basically tell you all the rules and regulations, what to do and what not to do. It will tell you if you are allowed to wear socks or not wear socks. A, there used to be a rule about anti-static wear, um, no tights and things like that. It will tell you everything that they want from you, so don't worry. You are never going to, to get it wrong because they will always give you the guidance first. So if you're nervous about going into placement, don't be. There is always people to ask. Everybody's super friendly because they've been there themselves. They've been students. My top tip is to, to make really good friends with the HCAs um, and uh, the circulating staff. They're usually really friendly and really good at looking after students because they understand that you're going to be doing a bit of their role to start as you're learning um, and they'll give you a different insight into it as well and usually they've been there for absolute years and they've got pearls of wisdom beyond belief pearls of wisdom that university cannot teach you and little knacks and ways of doing things that just mean the world to you to get the hang of things listen to your mentors be professional show up on time I cannot tell you how important it is to get as much from your placements as possible even missing a few days, you could miss something that makes a difference between you being able to scrub up and get that last competency ticked off. It is, you are gonna hit the ground running. It is full on, non-stop, full time, and you have to be ready for that. You have to be committed to this. Um, but if you are, it's so rewarding, and it's a lot jam-packed jam into those three years now. We had to do it in two, you guys get three. It's worth it but you have to take it seriously, you have to be committed. You will be so tired coming home, finishing, working eight till four, you are essentially working a job and being asked to study at the same time, a full-time job and study. It's really hard, you have to be disciplined. I studied on the train, you're gonna have to, as much as you wanna go out and party and have fun at the weekends, you can do a bit of that, but there are gonna be some weekends where you have to study the whole weekend, you know? So you've made this decision, you did the hard work in getting into university, so now you've just gotta, embrace it and uh, make the best of it and I know it's very difficult during a pandemic and uh, finding a place for students has been probably very hard so I should graduate in October next year if I can uh, get to grips with my third year that I'm just starting so I'm I'm start I'm going back to my third year of uni too so I promise I understand it's not easy and it's tough but you guys if I can graduate and become an ODP you can too so just enjoy it embrace placement enjoy your block of uni get your books, get studying, don't forget all of my ODP videos are listed in this playlist for becoming an ODP, I'll film something soon and get that up and take care till then guys, look after yourselves, stay safe in practice, take care, good luck and uh, you're going to make a wonderful ODP, see you soon, bye!